All right, boom. We are streaming live here. Perfect, perfect. So welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Luxury Lunch and Learn. I'm your host, Michael Lafito. If you have any comments, questions whatsoever, please type them in. Let me know where you're watching from. This way I know that uh, you can hear me okay. So type in the chat box where you're watching from, and um, and then that's also where you'll type in your questions. I'm, uh, I'm really excited to have today's guest on before I introduce Rebecca. Just a reminder, we've done several of these Luxury Lunch and Learns. We've recorded them. They're on... Uh, they're on our YouTube channel. You can go to Marketing Luxury Group. They're on our YouTube channel, and we'll also share that link. Uh, I'll have my assistant type in some links where you can watch our other episodes. So on Monday, uh, we had the world president of FIOPSI. We've had Leslie Akers, who runs a luxury division for Keller Williams. We've had uh, Craig Hogan, who runs a luxury division for Cobalt Banker, and some uh, other amazing guests. I don't want to leave anybody out. Uh, and then to, on Friday of this week, we have Ann Miller, who runs both the commercial and the luxury divisions for Remax. So we're looking forward uh, to that. So again, just type in uh, the chat feature so I know where you're watching from. We have a lot of people streaming live, uh, more so than on our actual Zoom link. But we do now have an official registration Zoom link website up. So you can go to Luxury Lunch and spelled out andlearn.com and my assistant will drop that in the comments where you can sign up for Friday Zoom meeting and for future Zoom trainings where we'll also list where our next uh, our next six guests. So we're looking forward to continuing this through May and June and hopefully post COVID-19, which is hopefully sooner than later. So um, today I'm, I'm excited to have on the, the, the CEO of the sixth largest multiple listing service called MyRed, Midwest Real Estate Data. Uh, it's a unique name, which she didn't uh, come up with that name. And uh, I have Rebecca Jensen on. And Rebecca, um, tell you guys, there's over 45,000 uh, members uh, within uh, MyRed, correct? MRED, yeah. MRED. I called my MRED. See, she corrected me. Tomato, tomato. See that? <laughs> MRED. Cheers, um, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, there's over 45,000 members. Uh, you guys are the sixth largest just by a couple hundred, I believe. Just neck and neck. And, you know, it's all good fun because Atlanta um, is who we're neck and neck with. And the CEO there, Jeremy Crawford, is actually on MRED's board of managers as a strategic manager. So it's always fun, but it's just by a few. So <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's great. Um, so we're always trying to bring in different perspectives uh, during this unprecedented time. So uh, a little over a week ago, we had Teresa Kenny, who I know uh, you're familiar with. Teresa runs the Miami Association of Realtors, which is the largest association in the United States, second largest uh, to Toronto in North America. And uh, again, di getting different perspectives from agents, team leaders, we're gonna be rolling out you know, additional guests. So if anybody has a suggestion as far as a guest, maybe someone that we haven't had on, please, uh, I'm all ears, please type it in or shoot me over an email. Uh, always open to suggestions. We're looking to raise the bar. I actually have uh, somebody that went to my high school that watches some of these. She has her home on the market in St. Charles, Illinois with another agent, and she's just getting different perspectives as well as uh, they put their home on and they're not getting as much activity as they'd like. So again, we have a, a wide gambit of, of viewers on my Facebook feed to other people's that are sharing it uh, to our Zoom accounts. So today we're bringing you a, a, a different perspective. And uh, Rebecca uh, sat through one of our live luxury designation classes in the fall. And I, I, I so appreciated that because you were looking for different perspectives from a uh, because I'm also an agent here in this in Illinois, and I'm an MRED. Our MLS is MRED, and so uh, you were looking for just different perspectives, which I really appreciated. So, tell me a little bit more about MRED and and um, before uh, COVID-19, some of the initiatives and what you guys are working on, and we could kind of talk about some things that uh, you guys are doing to pivot during this unprecedented time. Great. Um... Yeah, so MRED is a regional MLS that is very unique as it applies to the business model um, 
compared to other MLSs across the country. So we are what I call a hybrid um, ownership model, meaning that we're owned not only by realtor associations, but also by brokers, both. And so um, the vast majority of MLSs are just solely owned by either one or more realtor associations. And then there are some that are solely owned by brokers. But we take the best of both worlds and um, that's our structure. So it gives us a lot of flexibility as it applies to reaching out to different segments of the market because it's, um, I, I like to think of it as the right tool for the right problem. And so we really can pull talent from the associations when needed and then from the brokerage community when needed to you know, attack any one particular issue. And so that's kind of what makes MRED unique. Um, consolidation is definitely a trend among MLSs across the country. And so that is definitely something that MRED has focused on quite a bit. Um, I've been aboard MRED for just over five years now. And um, previously to that, you came from Utah, right? You were. Yeah, I was the CEO of the regional MLS in Utah that comprised of, I don't know, it was like 95% of realtors in Utah subscribed to um, okay. that MLS. And mm -hmm. so anyway, it was through networking and other opportunities that I ended up here in greater Chicago area. <laughs> yes, yes. And uh, I know your husband is a, uh, a veteran, former military. And so one of the things I'm doing for each of these lunch, luxury lunch and learns is we do have some luxury swag. So I'm, I'm, I'm rolling out each of our, our various uh, shirts. So uh, again, we do a lot of fun, different things, but this is my shirt today. It's, it's my American luxury shirt. It's an American flag. It says luxury. And I thought Jason would appreciate that today. So uh, that's, that's what I'm, uh, rolling out and um, I again, love swag it's that's some good swag right there <laughs> most people most people love swag um, and again for those of you that are watching by the way we have some people I have uh, from Costa Rica I have um, Mark Benson from Naples Florida he, he's uh, doing some great things down there for those of you that are watching again if you have any questions uh, throughout our interview uh, today, please type them and please don't be afraid to share this as well. Part of what we are teaching agents, right? We're in a show and tell industry is you as a leading authority or as, as an agent are always looking to get better and bring value. And so by investing time watching this training and other trainings, don't keep that a secret. Your database, your past clients, your current clients need to know that you're, you're, you're on top of things. So feel free to share, like, and, and share uh, this page with uh, some group that you think would benefit so um, so you shared a little bit more about MRED there's over 45,000 agents uh, talk to me about um, pivoting uh, how are you guys have pivoted during this time um, have you guys done anything in particular for not just your staff but for your your clients which are you know the real estate agents the brokers that are sharing their listings on your on your MLS platform so to speak well, I mean, so I mentioned earlier that I've been aboard MRED for um, just over five years. And um, one of the first things that um, was unavoidable when I moved here was the Chicago weather. <laughs> and with that, power outages, and I think rapidly following a couple power outages at our office, there were tornadoes that were hitting, and it was just like, okay. Um, so I started then preparing MRED for a turmoil and I didn't know what it was going to look like but mm. what I did was that I immediately said okay there is no reason that my staff members need to physically locate in this place when we can just get voice over IP and, and put everybody working from home on an as-needed emergency basis so we did we did that early and tested it um, and so it came to be very nice um, the other thing is that we looked at you know what is our reserve status as any business you know it's always recommended to evaluate that and see um, you know where are they and what are the most likely um, things that would happen. Now, I'm not saying I thought anything like this would happen, but sure, sure. Just to, you know, in, insurance. So all those yeah. definite business items we looked at. So um, I think that those all came into play. But when it came to learning that the governor was going to put everyone on lockdown, um, 
we called a special board meeting, just meaning it was not a regularly scheduled board meeting. And uh, it was immediately after the governor met. And so our board was very responsive and said, hey, we need to evaluate um, our business rules as it applies to agents. And so immediately they said, hey, showings, we're not gonna find people. I mean, we've never find people for the money anyway. It was only to try to incentivize people to obey our policies. Um, so, so let me stop you right there. So okay. if, if an agent in, in the Chicagoland area that, that uh, their listings go on your MLS, in the past, if it was, listed for sale in the MLS, they had to allow showings. In other words, again, there's gonna be conflicts, but a seller or an agent couldn't just put it on the MLS with no intention to make the home available to the general public through a, through a showing with an agent, correct? Exactly, yeah. So um, obviously ch things changed. And so our board said, hey, as long as there's a stay at home order in place, then we're not going to find people. Um, we do still think that you should make a decent effort of showing a property, but you know, technology isn't adopted equally among everyone at the same time, it can take mm -hmm. a while. Um, and that's where our vendors definitely stepped up to the plate and started coming up with some really cool innovations about um, virtual showings and the way that they can be propagated to different websites. Um, so that was something. Um, so fine policy suspension. Um, we did debate whether or not days on market should be uh, either hidden from view altogether or if MRED should come in and hit the pause button on every active listing and just say, hey, the days on market are not going to continue calculating. Mm -hmm. And that was a very um, well-discussed decision among the MRED board, and it resulted in, a, no, we're not going to stop days on market because one of the roles of an MLS is to give you, the practitioner, accurate information. And um, we are a historian of that data. Mm -hmm. uh, you all use days on market to look at how long a uh, property has been on the market and to make your own assessment. You know, and so we didn't want to tinker in that um, and insult your intelligence in the, <laughs> in the meantime. Sure. So sure. we decided on active properties, it is going to continue to tick. However, I think that this is also an opportunity for MLSs to improve the way that that is recorded. And I'm happy to talk more about that if time permits. Um, sure. But that was a decision that was made. However, we do have a status called temp. And so T-E-M-P, yeah. like temporarily yeah. off the market. Temporarily off the market. It's a long-standing status. And previous to the executive order, it did um, calculate Accumulate. on the yeah. market. Yeah. And so the board decided, no, we want people to use that temp status that they truly aren't going to show a property. And um, so we'll ask people to move them to temp and then we won't count days on market. In the meantime, it's definitely my intent to hold several focus groups. And I've gone national on this issue with days on market. Uh, there was a resale conference last week that had a great discussion about it, as well as an MLS um, roundtable Zoom meeting uh, that we talked about it there as well. So if any okay. of your viewers are interested at any level, any state to have a discussion about this, let me know. <laughs> well, that's great. I appreciate it. And I, I do want to circle back on that uh, towards the end. Uh, but thank you for that insight. Uh, talk to me a little bit about statistically. And I, I uh, in prep for today, I just said, hey, um, talk to me a little bit about, you know, maybe how many um, new listings uh, our multiple listing service has, you know, maybe over, you know, the last 30 days or month of April compared to, to maybe let's just say a year ago, just to give, um, and again, if you don't know the exact number, that's okay, but approximate. Oh, and I don't know if you can share a screen because that was another thing that we did is that we created a separate page on our website. Um, so the website is mredllc.com and oh, yes. then there's a COVID page. And so yeah. we thought it was important to give weekly statistics on a number of metrics um, just to anybody that was interested. So this is not behind a paywall. You don't have to be a member of MRED to see, and this is MRED wide. And so it gives a ton of data, um, again, updated weekly, but it includes like the number of closed listings in 2020, 
um, compared to 2019. Okay. Uh, under contract, new listings added, um, rental information, uh, those people using temp status, um, the number of open houses that are being held, the number of showings that are being held, um, and then some general statistics as far as the average sold price and the median sold price, uh, same with rentals, the average rented price. And so you can see in a graphical way how the market is responding. And you know, as you look through all of these graphs and it's, it's um, positioned year over year and again, updated weekly, I guess it's probably not gonna be a shocker to anybody that this year is not faring as well as last year. Sure. Um, so yeah and, and we're going to share that link by the way we're going to share that link so i just uh sent that over to my assistant she'll type it in um to uh uh to the, the uh the, the live stream as well as uh, zoom too um i'll make sure um to, that she does that on zoom too um thank you yeah because that page not only has our resources for statistics but also for a lot of our other just news updates in general and, you know, training opportunities and mm -hmm. also shifted as well. Well, that's great. You know, and for those of you that are watching, depending on where you're at, uh, some things that uh, you can do f to make your, your showing safe. Again, you know, have light, having the lights on ahead of time, right, to minimize contact for both the agent and buyers flipping switches on, that sort of thing. You know, having conversations with the agent ahead of time, letting them know you've done that. You know, uh, disinfecting ahead of time, disinfecting afterwards. These are all things. Uh, having, you know, they call them booties to slip on uh, the shoes, but more importantly, maybe even take the shoes off. These are all some things that you can do to be preventative. There's some uh, MLSs, some boards, some uh, companies, uh, real estate brokerages that are requiring um, disclosures. Um, be filled out and returned before the showing stating that the buyer or the agent to their knowledge hasn't been exposed to COVID-19, has no symptoms, et cetera. So uh, those are kind of, they call them CYA, cover your blank. Um, those are some things that uh, check with your broker owner or your board uh, to see if, if they're doing that. Because again, we have people watching from all over the world right now. So I just wanted to share that um, with you. So um, some, some good information there. and. Um, t talk to me a little bit about, you know, some things that are not even COVID-19 related. So um, when you first came over, and, you, and I didn't ask you this ahead of time, so you might not know these answers, so that's okay, I'm putting you on the spot. But uh, when you came over about five years ago, I, I believe the number of pictures on our MLS at the time was either 25 or maybe 36, because th there was an increment increase so at one point it was 25 pictures in the mls about five to seven years ago and then you know some three to five years ago it, it increased from 25 pictures to 36 um, and then now i believe it's up to 100 is that correct unlimited yeah it's so, unlimited it's unlimited yeah. so uh, were you part of those decisions or on on some of those um those calls or those meetings as to why the, the, the increment from 25 to 36 to unlimited? Because again, you're coming from a from Utah, from another MLS, and you talk with, that's one of the things, I, you, you go to these conferences, you're sharing best practices, you're in the trenches. Um, what went into uh, the increase from maybe not even 25 to 36, but 36 to unlimited, if you don't mind sharing that? Oh, I'm happy to. Um, so there are a couple different stories related there. Uh, one of them is that I've just, um, I've learned different processes that have helped me make business decisions. And one of those is, it's called Agile. It came from the computer industry, which is where my actual college education training is from. But essentially, um, it is a, what allows businesses to quickly make decisions decisions and maybe pivot okay. and all based upon customer feedback. So the first year that I started at MRED, we um, rolled out what I is NPS survey, net promoter score, uh, which is okay. a survey that MRED has used twice a year to reach out to every single user. And oh, I'm sure I fill that out every time. I'm sure. I I'm like know. I love it. Out. I really do. So it's two questions like how likely are you to speak highly of us? You know, so that really gauges on a scale of one to 10. 
a metric that my staff can focus on. And then the second question is just, what can we do better? Please tell us, write an essay if you want. That's also unlimited. <laughs> and yeah. So we look through every single response that, and we get thousands of responses, which is awesome. And we try to incentivize that with giveaways and whatnot. But um, so then we put them into categories and say, you know, what do our customers want? And so that definitely came out. Um, so that's one thing. Um, also in Utah, that MLS built all of its own software. So I had a third of my staff there that were software engineers. Oh, nice. We had done unlimited photos there for a while. So okay. I knew how it would be utilized. And it just so happened that when I came aboard MRED, our office space, uh, our lease was up for renewal. And we had a thousand square feet of office space dedicated to servers. And honestly, it was just a junk room for most of that thousand square feet. Sure, and sure, yeah. Maybe cloud computing was clearly what the future held. And so we um, basically saved money by taking away the server space that we were paying Class A office rates for and putting it on the cloud, which also was cheaper and allowed us to do unlimited photo storage. And so nice. that's the story. Oh, that's, see, I got the background. So. You know, one of the things that I teach, Rebecca, if you recall through uh, the, the class, you know, is I believe an agent and a broker's job is to position the home more effectively. When I say position, I'm talking about photos, description, 3D tours, videos, uh, what you accentuate, what you downplay. And a lot of agents could use some improvement as far as maybe they're showing too much and, little too, and not enough of other things. So, um, Again, I challenge agents that are in MRED, or if your MLS allows unlimited, uh, there, you could show too much. You could be actually hurting the client by showing too many photos, you know, if there's dated bathrooms and, and, and other features that are actually a, a perceived as a negative. So do everything ethically, of course. You know, my good friends over at Box Brownie, they do some photo enhancements and they can digitally remove, you know, I was selling a home recently that had a stuffed water buffalo head and a lion in the lower level. And so they removed those items because the owner refused to, but, but you have to be ethical, right? You can't digitally remove the, the power lines that are behind the house or something like that to mislead the public. But again, be smart. Just because there's unlimited doesn't mean you should use unlimited. Right. And I have to say that as a result of attending your class, I think that I heard several people talk about the need for, um, it almost sounds like duplicate photos, but it was about branding on photos. And so I have having two different versions of photos. And so, you know, credit to you, I took that and then did some additional research to see you know, how many other subscribers would appreciate that same feature. And I don't think it was too long after that class that our board decided um, to allow that. It's something that is on the roadmap for us to build out so that brokers have more control over the different segmentation of marketing, because you might want to give a certain segment of photos with your branding on it to certain people. And then maybe it's not appropriate to do that with another venue, whether that's, you know, if you're receiving those photos as a, a buyer's agent, you probably mm -hmm. don't want the listing agents branding all over that. So yeah. Um, we're just looking for more flexibility, um, but that was a, a need that I heard in your class, and so it was yeah. nice to be able to respond to. Yeah, no, that that, that was that was great, and um, you know we toured a couple high-end luxury properties in that class. Uh, the first one we sold recently um, for two point one million, <laughs> and then the other one was the house behind me, Architectural Digest, most beautiful home for sale, and that was that's an amazing property. So all good things. Um, so appreciate the insight there on, on the photo. So if you guys have any questions, I'd love to know, I'd love for you to chime in and share where you're from and how many photos uh, your MLS allows. Because one of the things last year, we did 34 trainings, Rebecca, across the country. And that's one of the questions I ask, you know, how many photos, like, and sometimes, like, you know, I do a lot of trainings in Texas because our courses are approved for CE there. And sometimes in one class, we'll have uh, different, they'll be part of different boards and different MLSs. So I'll have different answers, um, which is uh, which is unique as well. So, um, you know, Mark from Southwest Florida, they allow 36 uh, in his, uh, his MLS. So 
thank you for uh, sharing that. And uh, I don't have the Facebook live stream up right now to uh, look into that, but I'll, I'll look at others. So um, let me see what other questions we have here. Any other questions coming through? Um, you know what I love too, we have different people. My, my, my old college roommate who's in the financial planning, he watches these things. He's got tons of real estate friends and he's looking for insight, again, just to understand our industry a little bit more, as well as to bring value to his real estate agent clients. And just like you attended the training, which, which um, I'm thankful for. So in your opinion, again, I know you're not a real estate agent, but you're, in your opinion, this is kind of a fill in the blank question. Those agents, those brokerages that will be successful post COVID are those that, um, that will have blank in common. Uh, it's kind of a fill in the blank. So, you know, again, those agents, those team leaders, those brokerages that are successful post COVID-19 are those that have blank in common. Well, um, I think just again, from my standpoint, those that, who, that prepared for a downturn, I mean, we all know that real estate is cyclical. And so, and I've been in this industry since the 90s, and it just seems like it goes up and it comes down. And so those that prepared for the downturn um, and that are also positioned with a good business plan to invest in a downturn, well, everybody else um, who, you know, might have just had bad timing, you know, maybe they just got into the industry and they didn't have a chance to really uh, build their reserves or build a good, um, you know, plan for when things were going to slow down. Um, I, you know, unfortunately, some people are probably going to leave the business because of this. We've yeah. seen it before. And that's unfortunate. And by the same token, um, I think the business will come back. It's going to come back. So those that were able to um, not only weather the storm, but also be really innovative and say, hey, you know, we're going to do everything that we can. And that includes not turning off the tap of investing. Um, those are the ones that, and there's business article after business article showing that those are the companies that end up ahead of their competitors when the market turns up. Mm -hmm. That's a great point. I recently had on our podcast, a guest from a technology company and he talked about, you know, there's so much, I, I, and don't get me wrong, there's tons of Zoom trainings and free trainings out there. I hope I'm not just one of a million, but this is kind of a unique niche. But, but my point is there's so much out there that those agents that pull back or go silent and those brokerages that totally pull back and are not bringing value to their, their, their agents as well as to their community, it's gonna be more difficult for them to ramp back up than those that are plugging away. You know, I don't wanna say business as usual, you gotta to be totally sensitive to where people are at, but, but continuing to bring value, checking in on clients, that sort of thing. It, he, he used the, the, the multiplier effect. Um, saying, you know, those those agents are going to make three to five times more of an impact because they're bringing value in a time where, you know, the, the general public and your agents need value. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, some of the... Uh All right. I don't know if the if I lost you on my end or if we all lost you. I'm gonna have you. Um, I'm gonna have you um, re-log back in, Rebecca. I'm gonna text this to you right now um, because it is quiet on my end. All right, guys. All right, while we're waiting on Rebecca to log back in, uh, please type in any questions that you have. I'm just giving her a quick call here. This is how technology works, multifaceting here. I am trying to reconnect, I'm not sure. All right, perfect. I was gonna have you just log right back in. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm not really sure why I disconnected. Oh, no worries. Up, but I am trying to get back in. All right, cool. 
All right, thanks. All right, so, oh, she's coming back on. There we go, we're good. All right. I'm not really sure how I cut out, or like when I cut out. <laughs> oh, you're, you're, you're fine. So that's, right, we're all adapting, shelter in place, working from home. Uh, we're susceptible to Wi-Fi and, um, yeah, I got my dog and my son next to me right now as we're doing a training. And um, so I think everybody's a little bit more uh, patient and forgiving uh, during this time. So um, I, I don't know exactly where you cut out either, actually. So um, I think I was just saying, like, some agents are reposting the statistics that MRED provides to, oh. you know, stay in contact with their clients and give mm -hmm. useful information about the market that... Yep. Um, you know, their clients wouldn't otherwise have or know about. Yeah, so. yeah no, that's a great point. And uh, you got a shout out here. Um, I got I to gotta read it to you. Um, let's see, Bill. Uh, let me see where he's saying here. I got I to gotta pull it up. Uh, uh, you know, Bill uh, Risser said, Rebecca killed it as a moderator at Inman Connect 2020. So uh, uh, Bill gave you a uh, some positive. He does some great things too, by the way. He's got an amazing, I think, podcast with over 200 episodes, uh, which is pr pr really impressive. We're at, uh, I think, releasing our 89th episode this uh, this week, which we're excited about. So, congrats and yeah, thank, thank you. Bill. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's been good. So, um, let's talk about visuals. You're talking about some of your members are using visuals. One of the tools that I really like and I've been using for a while, because I'm a big believer in good visuals. Steve Jobs mm -hmm. talked about uh, the power of demonstration. Um, so I use a lot of visuals and I tell agents they should use visuals uh, when they're putting content out there for buyers, for sellers, for market updates, or actually on a buyer presentation or a listing presentation. And one of the resources that you provide members of MRED is called InfoSparks. Now, again, those of you that are watching, uh, you might have to check with your MLS to see if they subscribe to InfoSparks. But one of the things that I love about InfoSparks is, is real-time data and it's hyper-local. And days on the market, list to sale ratio, how many months of inventory. So one of the things that I, uh, I'm i a big fan of uh, keeping current matters and Steve Harney, and we're gonna have uh, them on, on a, a training coming up, but they provide some great infographs that can help educate the consumer. So if I'm talking to you, Rebecca, and you're a seller and I'm saying, oh, it's a buyer's market or it's a seller's market, or there's 10 months of inventory, you might not, Put, be able to put that in context as far as, hey, what does that exactly mean? And info sparks and great visuals and great data help break it down and keep it really simple. And that's what I, I like. So just a shout out to one of the, the services that uh, and tools that you, you know, you offer the MRED uh, agents. Thank you so much. And I will pass that along. It's a great vendor relationship that Emirate has had for a long time. And they are also very responsive to listening to us. So if there are things that you would like us to pass on that you want to see, uh, please let us know. We are all about feedback. So that's great. That's <laughs> awesome. Good, good. Um, all right. So l l last uh, question I have for you is, um, Post-COVID, I mean, do you feel like we're going to be doing more and more of these um, Zoom trainings? People are going to go more remote. Um, do you see attendance for big conferences? Now, I know immediately post-COVID, people are still going to be, so the answer probably is going to be, yeah, a lot of these big conferences are going to shrink in size in the short term. But moving forward, um, talk to me a little bit about what uh, agents and brokerages, how are they going to adapt uh, with you know post COVID with technology Zoom trainings and video in your opinion, in my opinion, get used to it. I think that it's here. I think that um, you know part of my management of all of this with Emred has been looking at our budgets, our travel budgets, um, seeing how we're communicating with our staff members, and quite frankly, doing research into who does it best. Um, forget where, but I listened to a podcast recently that interviewed the CEO of WordPress and okay. he talks about having a completely distributed workforce that is global and some of the best tips there. So I personally was already at full tilt on 
being sick of traveling somewhere, doing maybe like a one or two hour presentation and then getting back to the airport and traveling back. And I know that I'm not alone. And so I think All right, so I lost you on my end here, Rebecca. Uh, hopefully you'll come right back on here talking about travel, COVID-19, post-COVID-19. Um, and from what I hear you saying is based on budgets and other uh, you know, things. Oh, there you are, you're, you're back on. Yeah. All right, maybe, maybe we got a little Wi-Fi. Uh, I think when I had Craig Hogan on last week, he talked about the gremlins. Uh, he had we had gremlins come on our technology last week and messed with uh, his video feed, uh, but we got you back on. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm not really sure what's happening. Oh, it's 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 all right. There's a lot of uh, you know we we I'm looking out today and the kids are dying to get outside. It's kind of gloomy <laughs> out. So, um, so one thing is there anything you wanted to add? I know we talked a little bit about days on market and your thoughts there a little bit. Um, and um, I want to respect your time and I'll, I'll open it up for any questions. If anybody has any, please type it in. Uh, questions you have, again, we have Rebecca Jensen on. She, she's the CEO of the sixth largest MLS, over 45,000 uh, members uh, based in the Chicagoland market called Emered. I, call, I called it my red, but uh, she corrected me. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and again, uh, looking forward to continuing this luxury lunch and learn series. I've had some great feedback. I got people watching from Mexico, Costa Rica, Florida, all over. Some people outside the industry are sharing these trainings and I had some powerful guests on and have some powerful guests lined up. Uh, when we had Brad Inman on last week, we kind of did a one word association. And, you know, I, I said uh, Redfin and he gave remarks, Keller Williams, we talked about EXP, we talked about the election with Brad and uh, it was pretty powerful. And, um, and so Friday we have Ann Miller on, uh, looking forward to having Ann. She runs a luxury division for Remax. They're doing some amazing things. Ann actually attended my Lux uh, designation class in Dallas in January. So, um, but let's get back to uh, days on market. You wanted to share some, some uh, your thoughts on the accumulation of days on the market or maybe something different. I, I'm not sure. Well, um, so I think I mentioned earlier that, um, I, so I'm the board chair of RISA, which is the Real Estate Standards Organization. And that is a standards body that gives the industry a data dictionary of defined terms with definitions. And um, it also helps you uh, have technology adopted easily. And so a conversation has been done there and also on the MLS level to um, really see how MLSs can be responding better to days on market. And so as a result of those two meetings and then some that I've had locally here, um, the general idea is that we can be more granular on days on market. And when I say we, I mean MLSs. Right. So what would it look like if we had um, a report for agents that broke down days on market by perhaps the time in a certain status. So the number of days that it was in an active status, the number of days it was in a pending status, um, and not just status, but also the number of days this listing was available to show versus not. Um, because we look at all of the different uses of it and a listing agent has a conversation with their owner that days on market are toxic. I believe you yes. have that as part of your curriculum, right? Yes. Yes. Um, and I know that agents use that as a resume building point, right? I sell things in this amount of time compared to what the market does. Sure. Um, so, and that also leads to different behaviors of, uh, people's kind of trying to challenge the MLS days on market by expiring them out and relisting them. Um, I kind of think of that as a like vanity days on market. How long have I had this listing versus, you know, how much is it the agent versus the actual house versus sure. the price. So yeah, because like currently in our MLS, I mean, it's 111 central time. I could cancel out a listing at 111 and relist it as at 112 and it'd show up as a new listing. Uh -huh. Now, of course, the cumulative days are there. Some MLSs require 30, 60, 90 days to be completely off before it will show up as a new, but ours doesn't. Thank you for that, by the way. <laughs> 
Well, so my point is that MLS is a historian and we're about the data. Now you can come up with an algorithm and somebody else will come up with a different algorithm. And Rizzo actually did a survey about all the different algorithms that are out there. And right. it's all over the map, no pun intended, but I mean, it is <laughs> really like each market kind of has their own flavor, right? So what I'm saying is that we should all collaborate because the agents that have been around a, a while, they're not fooled. They go in, they look at the history, they see how long it's been in this particular price range. They see, you know, was it this brokerage or that brokerage and they have their own ideas that way. Um, so my point is from an MLS standpoint, I want to just arm you with the tools you need to slice and dice it as you will. You're the expert. I just want to give you the data. Now, now some data, and I love that. So some data that I would love to see okay. on there would be, <laughs> yes, thank you. And this is what I, Rebecca is, she <laughs> takes into account now. She, she'll run it through the powers that be, but she listens, which is, a, which I, that's all you can ever ask for. Um, so thank you. Um, so, you know, I'd love to see days on the market um, in different categories. So, you know, I'm, I'm marketing this home behind me, right? That, that's at Barrington Hills, Illinois for 9.5 million. And it's, you know, I'm the third real estate agent. You know, there's an old adage, you want to be the first born, the second wife and the third real estate agent. Well, you know, my point is this has been on for a lot, while and the history is as long as far as days on the market. I'd love to be able to break down days on the market based on price points as well. So, hey, they made the price from, you know, 12.5 to 9.5. You know, how many days on the market total? How many based on the various price points they are? Um, that would be pretty cool um, to offer. Cool. We'll add that to it. I mean, you know, does that make sense though? Because, you yeah. know, we, we have people that are good at it. I can't say I'm good at math necessarily, but. <laughs> I know yeah. people Most are. human beings are terrible at math, <laughs> including real estate agents. They're, they're really not. <laughs> but yeah, any ideas like that, please send them my way. And again, this isn't just for MRED. Um, I'm wanting to cast a wide net on this because I mean, a lot of the way that the brokerage industry is going is uh, expansion, which is awesome. But that means expansion beyond MLS boundaries. And so the more MLSs that we can have collaborate on this, I think the better for brokerages. So, mm -hmm. um, and we do have a number of MLSs that have already expressed interest in collaborating on this. So that's awesome. Get for us sure. some more. No, that's good. That's good. Uh, anything else to add? And I'm looking on my phone to see if we have any questions typed in here. Um, all right, let me see here. All right. Doesn't look like there's any other questions. So if, Anybody wants to find out more information on MRED or uh, be in contact uh, somehow with you? Um, should they just go to the website? What, what's the best way? Um, with me, it's just simple. Rebecca at MREDLLC.com um, or, you know, our help desk or pretty much MRED. We're, we're definitely not an enormous company, you know, <laughs> so if MRED, it'll make its way to whoever it needs it. But I would say during these times, uh, I would recommend checking out our COVID page because um, we do have a number of vendors that have stepped up and given us technologies that are brand new. Um, we do have the relationship with Remind. They have really stepped up to the plate and um, done a lot to help with virtual showings. Um, we were the first MLS in the country to launch the broker public portal um, as provided by HomeSnap. HomeSnap has really stepped up with some tools there, um, showing time. And so I, we have all virtual training classes and you can see how to become more lean and mean in this new reality um, just by visiting our webpage, which is mredllc.com and then we have a COVID page that has all of this so perfect yeah and we, we posted that link as well thank um, you. so yeah no thank thank you appreciate that um, and so yeah that that's awesome well listen I really appreciate your time keep raising the bar looking forward to uh, ongoing discussions um, with you to to uh, continue to, to raise the bar in the MLS and locally as well as outside the area um, so thank you again Rebecca Oh, I appreciate the opportunity, Mike. Thank yeah, you. You're a great, <laughs> great guest. You're welcome. You're welcome. And uh, for those of you that um, 
have any questions for me, you can send me a private message, shoot me an email, michael at marketingluxurygroup.com. Same time, same place, every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, save the day, two days from today, we have Ann Miller, uh, head of luxury and commercial for Remax LLC. Uh, and she's awesome, looking forward to that. And we also have, I think my assistant posted uh, on the Facebook streams, the next six guests we have lined up. So uh, again, if you have any suggestions, any comments, let me know if you have more questions on our course or our, we created a Breaking into Luxury for the California Association of Realtors. It's go to breakingintoluxury.com. It's a two module course and there's some bonus items, uh, but keep raising the bar, be a better neighbor, make someone's day. and. Uh, Till next time, we'll see you guys on Friday. Take care. Thanks again, Rebecca. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.